We've had a lot of Resident Evil adaptations via the film and television medium, and the one that seems to be the most universally disliked is Netflix's 2022 Resident Evil television series. It is very loosely based on the games and changes a lot of details, events, timelines, and has a story that is very different from the source material. The only main character carried over is Albert Wesker, and he is extremely different from the games. I'm not talking about his skin color, that doesn't matter, but I'll get into that a little bit later. He has two daughters, Jade and Billy, that serve as the main protagonists. The show has eight episodes and was exclusively made for Netflix and then was cancelled after the first season. I'll be covering each episode individually and picking them apart. I'm a huge Resident Evil fan and have seen everything there is to offer from the series, so we'll see how it turns out. The first episode starts with a scene similar to 28 Days Later. The city is in ruins and there's rubble and debris everywhere. What city is this? I don't know, they didn't say. The main character, Jade, has a tent set up in the middle of a street and keeps rabbits in cages in a van near her camp. She has a lot of rabbits and I would like to know how she got all of them and how she's taking care of them. Is she even taking care of them? They look pretty healthy, but I digress. She gives a monologue about how scientists claim the world would end in 2036 due to climate change, but obviously they were wrong. The world looks just fine. She says the world ended a long time ago, specifically 14 years ago. So I guess her point is that it happened sooner than the scientists predicted and science is fake. The opening title screen shows an R and an E, so you'd think they're spelling out Resident Evil, but then they show a V and then the full title. I don't know what they were going for there. Jade apparently has a husband and daughter that she hasn't seen in six months and does a video call for her daughter's birthday. After her daughter says that her dad almost burned down the house while making waffles, Jade brings up that she went to Disneyland with her sister as kids for her birthday. Her daughter asks if she can go there someday and Jade's dad quickly changes the subject. I guess they want to hide the fact that the world is destroyed from their child, even though it's like, how is that working out for you? Unless they live in one of those underground bunkers that the rich people have and never let her leave it? They could have just told her that Disneyland shut down? I don't get why they just changed the subject, it's weird. Jade apparently works out in the field studying zombies and their behavioral patterns. Zombies are also called zeros in this universe. She lures the zombies out by pricking a rabbit with a needle and letting it bleed a little bit. I would love to know if she caught this rabbit in the wild or took it from someone's home because rabbits would not be that calm unless she raised it as a pet. They would also not stay still if you prick them with a needle and make them bleed. If you even look at a wild rabbit the wrong way, they will just take off running. The zombies are holed up inside a large building with the thick glass doors closed but can somehow smell a tiny bit of blood on the rabbit that isn't anywhere close to the building. It's gotta suck for Jade when she's on her period. Luckily, the rabbit manages to evade and escape the zombies, which is the only realistic behavior shown during its appearance. The zombies then turn their attention to Jade and chase her through the city to her camp. She has a fire trap set up that sets all the zombies on fire but leaves her safe in the middle. The zombies burn to death, but after the fire is out, the corpses all look fine and their clothes aren't burned. All of the commotion causes a giant rainbow caterpillar to pop out from the ground. It's about to attack her, and then we're thrown to a scene from 14 years ago, specifically three months before the end. We see a nice car driving to a utopian neighborhood where everything looks futuristic and is completely white, to show how nice it all is. We'll see how long that cleanliness lasts. The two teenagers in the car are a young Jade and her sister Billy. As they're driving, the kids in the neighborhood stare them down, and Jade is really not enthusiastic about moving here. And this is where we meet this universe's Albert Wesker. In the games, Wesker is a very power-hungry and manipulative man who isn't above using others for his own gain, and I mean literally use them. If you associate with him, you will die by his hand. thought they were partners. Wesker doesn't give a damn about anybody but himself. 
He doesn't care about anyone other than himself, and his ego is through the roof. Plain and simple, he is evil incarnate. Here, he is shown to be a highly intelligent researcher who is very serious about his work, but is also a loving and doting father to his two daughters. This is where it throws me. It's extremely out of character for Wesker to take care of anyone else, and I don't see him ever being a father in canon. Well, a good father anyway. You know how Jake turned out. He is very lighthearted and tells the girls all about how great their new school is going to be and that they have kombucha on tap. It's just weird. The only thing I could see Wesker drinking is the blood of his victims. I think they should have made this character an original character or even based him on William Birkin, who is similar to Wesker and has a daughter. It would have worked better in my opinion. William Birkin is another Umbrella researcher who creates the G-Virus while trying to make a cure for the illness that his daughter Sherry has. Right there, it's like he would have been a better choice for the character instead of Albert Wesker. But I guess the show wouldn't have been as interesting to people if the main character was William Birkin instead of Albert Wesker. Jade is not impressed with their new neighborhood or their house and vocalizes it. She is suspicious of the white people living nearby due to them being in South Africa, but from what I've been told, that part of the country is mostly inhabited by white people. They meet their next door neighbor Carol and go in their cool house. Everything is white and pristine inside, and I wonder how long it will take before it gets dirty. Umbrella built these houses and probably spent a lot of money on them. Would they be mad if they did a house inspection and saw that the place wasn't immaculate? Carol also cuts pieces of a cake that is completely white with no garnishes or anything on it. Jade makes a sarcastic comment about reading Zootopia porn as a hobby for some reason. I don't think Carol even knows what Zootopia is, though. She seems like she's straight out of the 1950s. Jade and Billy banter about their feelings on their new home. The subtitles also made sure to let me know that it was young Billy and Jade talking, not Billy and Jade, in case I was confused about their ages between the time jumps. Billy picks up a caterpillar that is implied to have been the one that is chasing Jade in present day. She should have killed it when she had a chance. We go back to 2036 and see the caterpillar chasing Jade and attacking her. It lifts her into the air and throws her up much like a dinosaur from Jurassic Park and she gets knocked out on top of a car windshield. The caterpillar is very upset that she's not awake to see her end and screams in her face to wake her up. Then it's killed by some bullets shot by bandits or whoever these bums are. Flashback time again, and we find out that Wesker shoots up his daughters as a way to bond with them. Okay, so you thought I'm gonna bond with her. That was my way We're gonna do a couple of lines of cocaine here. That's why I bonded with her. Just kidding, he's actually just taking Billy's blood. Jade doesn't need his assistance and gives him a vial of her blood. She'll make a great heroin user and makes a similar comment that echoed my inner mind. The face Wesker makes after she says this is pretty hilarious. Later that night, Jade and Billy talk about the blood drawing and we find out that they need blood taken every two weeks. Billy doesn't question it too much and Jade is suspicious. Then they say Wesker might be a vampire, and I got code vein flashbacks. It also reminds me of my stay in the mental hospital where they had to take blood from me every few hours, so maybe he's just checking to see if they have syphilis. They're going to start their new school the next day, and Billy is worried that she might lose control of her temper due to getting mad and doing stupid shit when she was younger. Stuff that a normal preteen through teen would do. She broke a kid's leg, so maybe not that normal, but, you know. Jade reminds her that she is Billy fucking Wesker and that she has a nice ass, apparently. We see Wesker in his lab and he has a crap ton of blood samples from the girls. He has so many that I don't know why he's still even collecting it from them. He could probably go a few months before running out. He shoots up with his daughter's blood and I don't know why. Maybe that's how he bonds with them. Under what theory do you do that? That was my way of being close with my daughter. It's the first day of school for the girls now. Billy is looking for a place to sit at lunch and sees Jade, but Jade has already made new BFFs and her table is full. She sits down at a table alone and we see another girl who is looking for a place to sit and is rudely blocked off from sitting at one table. Billy and that girl are both outcasts. Maybe they can become friends. The subtitles show that someone says, I know they're not welcome you. 
And it's from a background character and doesn't make sense, so I don't know why it's even on screen. The outcast girl sits on top of the table Billy is at and greets her. By her body language, it's obvious that she's interested. Maybe they'll be the OTP. Jade tries to get Billy to come sit with her, but Billy ignores her for her new friend. The girl starts questioning their relationship, and Billy explains that they're twin sisters that have the same dad, but different egg donors who were both put inside of a surrogate mother at the same time and were birthed at the same time. I don't think it works that way, but I'm not a doctor. The outcast girl shows her true colors by calling Billy a freak, and I don't think their relationship will work out anymore. She makes a ton of rude comments and talks about how cool hunting with her dad is when Billy says that she's a vegan. She is such an asshole and stops Billy from leaving just to verbally abuse her some more. No wonder no one wanted her to sit with them. Billy snaps and flips her off, which enrages the girl and she attacks Billy. The fight causes a huge crowd to surround them and the students start recording it because who doesn't want to watch that? There's an infomercial about a drug named Joy and the girl in it is drinking out of umbrella flask bottle that I really want. I have no idea what Joy is based on the commercial. Is it a tablet? Is it an injection? Is it an enema? No one knows. All we know is that it makes people happy and improves their lives somehow. Wesker is the creator of Joy and is not impressed with the commercial and criticizes it, which is pretty funny. He says it's not targeted to the right audience because the woman in the commercial has a family and a great house. Why is she taking the pills? Maybe there's something going on behind the scenes, Wesker. You don't know her life story, dick. Billy and Jade burst in through the door, and Jade asks Wesker why he didn't answer his phone when she called. He tells her that he's talking to his bosses on the phone, and she says, Fuck you! before knocking the phone off of the table. Maybe they just need some joy in their lives. Here's the perfect presentation. The video of the fight has gone viral, maybe, and Billy is very upset about it. Jade encourages Billy to get back at the bully violently, and we all know that will end well. We go back to 2036, and adult Jade wakes up in a weird lab with no one else around. Why does it always start out like this? She's able to turn on their computer or whatever without knowing anything about it, or passwords, or anything. Just walk right up, you can access anything you want. The dude that brought her here isn't surprised to see her up and about, and Jade doesn't really question anything either. I feel like they may have gone through this exact situation multiple times in the past. They're in this kind of sanctuary that's surrounded by zombies like Attack on Titan with the Titans. Now, my thing is, pick a number of zombies you want to kill every day and get to work. They can't reproduce, so eventually all of them can be taken out. If everyone kills 10 zombies a day, you're good. Just snipe that rifle right at their heads and BOOM! Headshot. Just a thought, don't let them control your lives. We're back at the high school and Billy apologizes to the bully who does not give a fuck and shoves a burrito in her face. Jade seems like she's going to punch the girl in the face, but doesn't and I think she should have. Towards the end of the day, the bully goes to the restroom and is followed by someone wearing a raccoon mask. Spoiler, it's Jade. When the bully sits on the toilet, Jade opens the door and whacks her on the head. I was really hoping that she would have killed her, but she just caused some bleeding. The principal finds the raccoon head in Billy's locker, and she's in a world of trouble now. The bully's father is called in and accuses Billy of being psychotic and hearing voices in her head. This isn't a normal accusation to throw at someone who hit your kid, so I feel like HIPAA is being violated here. Someone spilled about her past and mental health. He threatens to have her sent to jail for 10 years, and I wonder if he knows what his kid did to Billy. Wesker walks into the principal's office, and the bully's dad, Dave, is like, oh shit, it's Wesker. So he's probably played a few of the Resident Evil games already. Wesker, shit. Wesker heard everything Dave was yelling about Billy, and uses his authority as a superior at Umbrella to intimidate him. It's pretty in character, and it's really funny to see how Dave shrinks down when he realizes how fucked he is. What do you do for Umbrella Day? I'm a server admin. And, um, how many people can do your job, Dave? A thousand? Ten thousand? Well, I work for Umbrella, too. And do you know how many people can do my job? One. Me. Wesker mentions all of the companies that he can get Dave blacklisted from, including Pornhub, and I really want to know why he brought that one up. I don't want you fired. 
I want you blacklisted. I want it so that no tech company ever hires you. Not Apple, not Google. I want Pornhub to shred your resume. Wesker summons his inner Hal when talking to Dave here. It works and everyone decides to just let it go because you do not fuck with Wesker. Bring him in anytime there's conflict and everyone will shut the fuck up real quick. We go back to the sanctuary surrounded by zombies and Jane gives us a biology lesson on them. The guy who saved her says he knows how to kill the zombies, but the number outside of their walls says otherwise. Jade isn't convinced that they'll ever be able to eradicate every zombie on Earth, but they should really just try out my plan. Back in their high school days, Billy takes the day off of school to go to Wesker's lab in Umbrella. Not really sure why, and none of the employees even bat an eyelid at a random teen walking around the facility. While she's in a waiting room, she sees a cart full of bunnies in cages. This upsets her, but she doesn't know for sure they're being experimented on. Maybe they're Easter gifts for the employees' kids or something. At home, she tells Jade that Umbrella experiments on animals, and for some reason, both of them seem kind of surprised about this. The subtitles have Billy saying, And you said you wanted them not bore you crazy frog stealing in my back, when she's trying to have Jade help her rescue the rabbits. They come up with a plan to break into Umbrella by looking online on how to hack security cameras. I'm going to assume that Umbrella provides the Wi-Fi here and monitors what is being searched. I mean, if you've searched something sketchy at home, the feds will come to your house, but I guess Umbrella trusts its employees and their families to not do anything suspicious ever at all? They don't even have any security guards or anything monitoring the research facility. With all the money they spent on this town or whatever, you'd think they'd throw in a few million into keeping the place locked up tight. The girls use a voice sample of Wesker on their phone to get into the facility and hide their faces under ball caps. Because apparently nothing keeps track of who comes in or out, especially during closed hours. It's just that easy. They also talk about how it was uncharacteristic for Wesker to be cold and calculating when he's normally a goofy, happy-go-lucky father. Come on, man. Back in 2036, Umbrella helicopters descend on the sanctuary to grab Jade. We meet some dude named Tate who looks like the brother of the dude who saved Jade and he has his men shoot everyone in the sanctuary. It's supposed to be shocking that Umbrella would shoot civilians for no reason. Now we're in the Umbrella Animal Lab with young Jade and Billy. There's a monkey in a cubicle that Billy takes a photo of. When she takes the photo of it, there's nothing in there, but when the camera zooms out, it has a blanket in there. Monkeys can make blankets magically appear out of thin air. Jade logs onto a computer using Wesker's credentials, and for some reason it shows the password. Uh, probably because the password is Spock21 and OMG LOL, he's such a nerd. But damn, Umbrella, get your shit together. We are being taken down by two teenagers. Billy finds a special kennel with no way to see what's inside and thinks it's a good idea to open it. Then the Cerberus is unleashed. Even the monkeys knew she fucked up and screeched at her. It chases the girls into an elevator and apparently knows how stairs work and which floor they went to. It busts the door open and begins a search for them. They run into a room and hide under a desk and hope the dog doesn't find them. If the zombies could smell a tiny bit of blood on a rabbit far away from their location through very thick glass, then shouldn't the Cerberus be able to sniff them out instantly? Dogs have a great sense of smell and the T-virus apparently enhances that, so why does it take so long for it to find them? Billy locks the dead bolt on a glass door because obviously the dog isn't rude enough to just smash through the glass. Jade accidentally sets off a hologram presentation that pisses the dog off and he comes running. He really does not like Joy. The Deadbolt does nothing as the dog is just able to push the door open. No broken glass or anything, it just swings open. What's the point? It also takes way too long for him to sniff them out under the table. He eventually does though and the girls try to escape through the front entrance. The Cerberus bursts through the glass wall and the girls try to avoid getting attacked. Billy isn't so lucky and is bitten. Jade grabs a fire extinguisher and manages to beat the dog to death. You know, the infected dog with super strength that just busted down a heavy duty glass door? The scene makes it seem like Billy is going to die, but immediately after, the present day scene has Tate telling Jade that her sister is looking for her. Wow, spoilers, you dick. The episode ends with Jade jumping into the mosh pit of zombies outside.
So that's the first episode of the Resident Evil Netflix series. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but I really don't like how they portrayed Wesker. Again, I think if they needed to have someone from the games, William Birkin would have been a better choice for that character. The story is pretty interesting, but I was more invested in the events 14 years ago rather than what's going on in 2036. Maybe it's because we've already seen it in the Wes Anderson Resident Evil movies. The Umbrella stuff seems like it was just thrown in there to make sure everyone knows it's Resident Evil. The show isn't terrible, but it's not Resident Evil. This and Welcome to Raccoon City tried to give a new spin on the game's story, but they didn't quite hit the mark. I guess we'll see how the next episode goes. Thank you for watching the video. Leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more content. Let me know if you want me to do more of these videos because I did them on like the open water movies for. And I thought it'd be interesting to cover Resident Evil. Thank you to my patrons on Patreon. I'm so glad that people want to support me. Please pledge to me if you want to help me out because it does help a lot. I also have a red bubble. I do stuff on whatnot occasionally and I have a game that I'm working on. So check me out and thank you for watching.